happy Sabbath once again. All right. Um, let us kneel shortly again. I do have a few pages of notes. Um, I'm not certain that I'm going to get to the end, but I'll try to manage it as best as possible. And again, this is just, it's Sabbath school, so let us discuss. As Kanal was saying, we seem to be in high hopes and spirits, good energy this morning, that we can all participate in the things that the Lord is opening up. Amen? Amen. So we, we, we um, on Wednesday, I touched a little bit on the foot washing. It's not a strange topic to us. Um, which we understand now that at the little time of peace is where we have this foot washing. And I'm going to pick right back up there on, on some, some of those thoughts. Um, they might sound different, but by God's grace, we'll understand it. Um, the first quote uh, from MS 22, 1897, paragraph 9. Now we're looking at the, this here. We know that it's the supper. Fall by the cross. But we also have the foot washing followed by the sop. All right, and then we have Mary here washing Christ's feet. So I'll just leave that there as a foot washing. So we're looking at Mary in this quote. And the Bible, um, Sister White says, pure sanctified love expressed by Christ's love, Christ's life work, is as, is as sacred perfume. Like an open bottle of perfume, it fills the whole house with fragrance. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I sent them into the into the world so christ is just showing that he's our example in all things right then he says and for their sakes i do what i sanctify myself so christ right here he's been sanctified by mary right at the at the at the little time of peace he's been sanctified because he says as you send me i send and where does christ send us right at the ninth hour to the little to the little to the flock, but in in in, in its uh, perfect true sense, is at the final review to the Gentiles, right? So Christ, He does that work as an example to us, as what we should receive also, in order to go and do that work. So this sanctification that Mary demo that 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 anointing that Mary demonstrates here is sanctifying Christ for the life work, and His life work is high priest. Right. So um, John 15, 12 and 13 says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than one than, that, a, that a man lay down his what? His life for a friend. So Christ here, she, he says this thing, this work that Mary done is to prepare me for my burial. for my burial. He was demonstrating his great love. Right, that he was preparing to go and do the work that he came to do. Right? Continuing on. Next quote comes from MS 28, 1897, paragraph 45. It says, There are gifts that we rightly proportionate, proportion to the character and necessities of ones upon whom we bestow them. Not many of the poor would appreciate Mary's offering or our what? Our Lord's sacrifice of Himself, right? So she's likening Mary's offering to the Lord's offering, right? Showing that the foot washing points to the to the cross. That ointment was a symbol of the overflowing heart of the giver. It was an outward demonstration of a love fed by what? 
heavenly streams until it overflowed. And what, what vision shows us that things flowing from heaven? The two anointed ones, right? Right. So keep that in mind because we, we, we might see some other things right here. This is the overflowing love, right? And the heart of the Christ is going to overflow us here with love. So, continuing on. And that ointment of Mary, which the disciples call waste, is repeating itself a thousand times in susceptible hearts, in the susceptible hearts of others. The Word of God, it, the Lord God, is profuse in His gifts to our world. And that word profuse means to give... We, it's like, it, it looks like waste, right? To give in abundance, right? It's just to just liberally give, right? So, and the Lord says, if you lack wisdom, come and he will what? He will liberally give, right? He says, it did not stop short of anything. And having given us, given us his only begotten son, shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Self-denial and the wholehearted service meets us e everywhere. To human reasoning, the whole plan of salvation is a waste of mercies and resources. They are provided to accomplish the restoration of the moral image of God in man. The atonement is abundantly able to secure all who, receive, who will receive it, mansions in heaven. The supposed prodigality of Mary is an illustration of the methods of God in the plan of salvation. For nature and grace, related to each other, manifest the ennobling fullness of the source from which they flow. So, nature is the natural, and grace is the, is the spiritual. So right here you see that nature, Mary, and grace... Christ. Christ is the one that comes to save us, right? And together, they're showing the method that God is going to use for our salvation. So, in Matthew 26 and verse 10, Jesus says, the Bible says, When, it, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she had wrought a what? A good work upon me. So this work of Mary here is a Good work means Mary was happy, All right? Let us see um, what Christ says. Let's read the bowl of the next quote. This is off ages 564, paragraph 4. It says, Mary's anointing of Jesus is mentioned as distinguishing her from the other Marys. Acts of love and reverence for Christ are and what? evidence of faith in him as the son of god and if the holy and the holy spirit mentions as evidences of women's loyalty to christ if she has what washed the saints feet if she had re relieved the afflicted if she have diligently followed what every good work go ahead she says the act of mary distinguishes her from the other churches yes so right there the lord is going to distinguish her from we're going to be Amen. You want to follow Mary, symbol of a church, right? Our, our truth, right? And she has the, 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 the casket. She has the box with the truth. So what does she need to open that box? Key. All right. Praise the Lord. We'll get there. She needs a key to open that box. Amen. So it says, um, Paul tells us, Paul gives us the definition of a true church, right? If she has washed saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted and dil diligently followed, be not hearers of the word, but doers also. All right? So let us see what, what Paul, Paul says that in um, 1 Timothy 5, 9 and 10. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, having been a wife of one man. Well reported of for good works if she have brought up children if she have lodged strangers if she have washed saints feet if she have relieved the afflicted if she have diligently followed every good work next quote ellen white says and she, she ties this to the foot washing and this is what i want us to see 
Christ recounted the opportunities Simon had to show his love for his Lord and his appreciation of what had been done for him. Plainly, yet with delicate politeness, Christ assured his disciples that his heart is grieved when his children neglect to express their gratitude to him by words and deeds of love. All right, now that, for me, it has more meaning because it's also for husbands. Husbands is Christ. And if Christ likes work, works of deeds and loves, then what, how sh what should a husband be demonstrating? The same, right? They should be to their wife and children, right? Providing, um, giving them, expressing gratitude in words and deeds of love. Likewise, the woman, she should be expressing gratitude in words of de um, in words and deeds of love. It's, it's a nice principle, all right? Some may think that this scripture is no longer in force, but it is. Writing of those women who were to be honored, Paul said, if she have lost strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work, many need sympathy and appreciation. But those who would wash saints' feet must have what? sanctified discernment that they may be able to recognize a saint. The garment of God's messenger may be traveled, stained, and worn, but he may be a what? An angel in disguise. So who comes in here now? Abraham. And what did Abraham do when the angels came? He washed their feet. Right? So right here, she says you need to have sanctified discernment, right? This is, when you come up to this point, you need sanctified discernment. How does, and I like also she fact that she says the garment of the messenger may be travel stained. When we come to this point, what happens to, to, to our feet? Because why? Because you've been traveling from the Sunday law, right? And you come up here and Christ realized you need to be, you need to be washed because you've been dealing with sin. So Christ, by washing the disciples' feet, what, what was he showing? I mean, it's Christ, that he had sanctified discernment, right? And the disciples, by not washing Christ's feet, was demonstrating that day, they lacked sanctified discernment. But I found a nice quote this morning. I didn't put it in here where Ellen White says, we, we simply, when we are forgiven, we simply should not repeat that error. So the disciples, they were forgiven for their error, which means we should what? Not repeat that error. We're not going to come here and not recognize whose feet needs to be washed. So continuing on in the quote, she says, Unrecognized angels talk with men speaking words that are to their soul as the water of life. Mary was looked upon as a great sinner, but Christ knew the circumstances that made her thus. He saw that she had great capabilities for good. He saw the better face of her character and knew that through his grace, she would become a partaker of the divine nature. And would purify her soul by obeying the truth. So when you come to this point, there's a certain level of discernment you have to have in type. But also in the anti-type, you should have an even a greater discernment. Right? Christ recognized Mary's heart. He recognized by her actions, right, by her good works, that she had a heart that was pure. And, and a heart, it says, that would become a partaker of the... Where, where is that? Where, where do we become partakers of the divine nature? Uh, fully, uh, well, beginning at the midnight cry, right? You become here because you have the, the, the two on the walk to Emmaus, right? You become a partaker of the divine nature. Humanity and divinity um, goes there to the cross. Next quote. That's why he, that's why he washed Judas' feet then. He Go saw ahead. what he could become. Yes. He Elma has a quote that says that. She says Judas could have been, uh, 
Yeah, she has a quote that talks about Judas and his abilities, and he had good qualities, just like Saul. Saul had good qualities to become a good king, right? but he chose not to, to listen to Christ. Hebrews 4 and verse 12, well, well known verse. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And is a what? Discerner of the thoughts and intents of the. So, how are we going to discern the saints at this point? By the word of God. How was Mary distinguished from all other Marys? Because she was fulfilling. The word of God. She had an understanding of the word of God. And so she was carrying out good works. Right? According to the word of God. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift come from the father of lights. Next quote. Many who profess the truth are not sanctified by it. And are not endowed with what? Wisdom. And they are not led and taught of God. And I have that in here because we know Peter, Peter was what? Taught of, God. taught of God. That's what the Bible says. Once he demonstrated that he knew Christ was the Son of God, he says he was taught of God. So, to come here, he was sanctified by the truth. Right? When you come to this point, little time of peace, you have to be sanctified by everything that you have been taught before this point. Continuing on to the next quote. She said, We have come to a time when God's sacred work is represented by the feet in the image, and in which, in which the iron and it was mixed with the miry clay. God has a people, a chosen people, whose discernment must be sanctified, who must not become unholy, laying upon what? The foundation... Wood, hay, and stubble. So, sanctified discernment means you're going to lay upon the foundation proper principles. Okay? Which means when you come to this point, then what must there be? A foundation for you to lay on. Right? Right here, there is a foundation there that you must lay on. So, the next quote. Just, let's read the bowl. It says, but on this day, before they were brought face to face with the great trial of their faith, the Holy Spirit rested upon them in power. For a little time, their eyes were turned away from the things which are seen. What do they now have? Sanctified discernment. To behold the things which are not seen. Beneath the guise of humanity, they discern the glory of the Son of God. Right? So right here, when Christ asks this question, whom do you say I am? And they respond, thou art the Christ. The Bible and, and Sister White teaches us that they now show that they have sanctified discernment. They are able to see that Christ, even though he's human, he's also divine. They, they begin to understand the combination of humanity and divinity. Jesus answered Peter saying, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The truth which Peter ha had confessed is the what? It's the foundation of the believer's faith. Right here at this point, you have this foundation. She says it was that which Christ himself had declared to be eternal life. But the possession of this knowledge was no ground for self-glorification. Through no wisdom or goodness of his own had it been revealed to Peter. Neither can humanity of itself attain to a knowledge of the divine. Sorry, never. Never can humanity of itself attain to a knowledge of the divine. It is, high, it is as high as heaven... What canst thou do? Deeper than hell, what canst thou know? Only the spirit of what? Of adoption can reveal to us the deep things of God, which I have not seen nor 
a heard, neither have entered into the heart of men. God hath revealed them to us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth the deep things. So right here at the little time of peace, Peter gets, she says, for a little time. Right? So this verse is not fulfilled in its fullest. Right? Because here it's for a little time they got a glimpse. For a little time they were able to experience the spirit of adoption. But it was not the full thing. Right? So, um, she says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fame. And the fact that Peter discerned the glory, uh, what did she say? The glory of Christ was an evidence that he had been what? Taught of God. Right? And we read earlier um, in this, was the quote of the text? Um, where was it? Where I mentioned being taught of God earlier. Where was it? 1T474. She says, Many who profess the truth are not sanctified by it and are, in, and are not endowed with wisdom. They are not led and taught of God. Right? So Peter is demonstrating that he has a wisdom. Amen? He was taught of God and he was, been, he was able to, ha to, 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 to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So for a moment there, Peter, he get a glimpse of the spirit of adoption, of what it, what it is to be a disciple of Christ. So this, ni this nice quote that Rashad shared with me this morning concerning the adoption is just a brief uh, overview of the spirit of adoption. Right? It's not, not an in-depth study. By no means, obviously. It says, the law, the law reveals to man his sins. But it provides what? No remedy. And this is the thought that I had when I read that line. When Christ washed Judah's feet here, what did, what did he reveal? He revealed to him his, his sins. Right? But Christ was revealing to Judas his humanity. In humanity, Christ cannot save you. He could only give you an example. But it's divinity, it's his divine nature that is able to say what? Thy sins be forgiven thee. So right here, you can see a glimpse of Christ's humanity. You see Christ in his humanity. And that convicts you of sins. Right? It says, but while it, promise, while it promises life to the obedient, Mary, that's what Mary saw. She saw Christ in his humanity but she also got a glimpse of his divinity right not a full view but a glimpse so she says it declares that death is the portion of the transgression the gospel of christ alone can free him from the condemnation or the defilement of sin he must exercise what repentance towards god so what was judah supposed to do at the foot washing make confession of sin right he must exercise repentance towards God, whose law has been transgressed, and what? Faith in Christ. How do we show our faith? By our works. What did Mary do? A good work. She demonstrated her faith by her work. Right? It says, and faith in Christ, his atoning sacrifice. Thus, he obtains remission of sins that are past. And becomes a partaker of the divine nature. He is a child of God, having received the what? Spirit of adoption, whereby he cries, Abba, Father. So, right here, you receive that birth, right? But, you demonstrate it at the midnight cry. Because Christ repeats this whole thing again, right? Judas didn't receive it, so what did he demonstrate at the midnight cry? That he didn't receive the spirit of adoption. He did, not get, he did not accept the glimpse that Christ gave him because we know that it, it, the way is through the cross. Right? There is no way to the kingdom but by the cross. So, all right. So Peter, 
Peter, is demonst Peter demonstrates that he understood Christ. And then I think Christ says, upon this rock, right? And whatsoever thou bound in earth shall be bound in heaven. All right, so let's continue. The Bible says he was moved by, Peter was moved by the Holy Ghost. Ellen White tells us that. For a moment, they, the Holy Ghost, because flesh and blood didn't reveal it, right? But the Father. The Bible says, we also have a more sure word of, what does prophecy give you? A glimpse of the future, <laughs> right? So right at this point, the most sure word of prophecy comes. Whereunto ye take heed, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a what? As unto a what? A light. What comes here at the midnight cry? Light, right? Amen. Prophecy. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in our heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So with that light must come a what? A key. The Lord has to give you a key. Go ahead, Quentin. Um, in Revelation, I forget which chapter, but it says that those who overcame, overcame by the blood of the Lamb. And, and the word of his testimony. testimony. Amen. And Amen. But it happens again at the midnight cry. Right? You have to see this is the perfect fulfillment of that thing. Where now you have what, it, what, what you need to overcome. To go over the chasm. To, 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 to go on to the other side. Go ahead, Rashad. Um, connecting with, with what, you, what you're saying. And, um, and with the works that is, is being done. What was given unto, um, unto Mary by performing that work and appreciation for her sins pardon mm -hmm. she was showing that she was um she believed in prophecy amen because in um and um lt 189 1909 paragraph three she said jesus in, and i'm gonna jump from the beginning to the end of the quote mm. it says jesus accepted the gift of mary and anointed him showing her appreciation of of his work of uh, of his work for her and then then she goes in speaking in the comparison between her and judas showing these two classes. But then it goes down and says, Jesus does not condemn Mary, Mary's anointing his feet, because Judas condemned her. Yes. Right? But then it says, let her alone. She has done this. She has done this with a, with prophetic anticipation Amen. of my burial. Amen. So she was she was seeing she was seeing forward. She received Amen. prophecy. She had this this um, word of prophecy. Amen. Amen. Of word of prophecy, the spirit of adoption. She was she was seeing where this where this one act was tending. Was tending. Amen. And praise the Lord too, because Mary, she was forgiven of a devil, of seven devils, mm -hmm. but she also witnessed the resurrection of her brother. Mary had much evidence as to who Christ was. And Christ said to her, I am the what? I am the resurrection and the and the life and she and he told her Lazarus will be resurrected on the last day so she understood in some sense if Christ were to die how is he going to resurrect Lazarus if he doesn't come back right yeah you have to understand that you have to see that right so praise the Lord she did have a prophetic anticipation so the Bible says in verse 12 of Verse 21 of 2 Peter. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as what? As they were moved. Right here a message comes. Men are going to be moved by the Holy Spirit to give... A, yes, moved out of the cities. To give a particular message. Right? But we know that message is met with some resistance. Right? Another hand? Go ahead. Anticipation. anticipation Mary saw the importance of that yes so the people who come there they teach that message because they see it's needed for the next amen um, for the next way mark yeah so whatever the, his death there, yeah someone deserves this is needed amen this, and you teach it amen but you know what comes with it is opposition yes praise Lord so Matthew 16 Verses 17 to 19. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my what? 
my Father. No way in there it says the Holy Spirit. Why do we say, why does Ellen White say the Holy Spirit? Because she understands the Bible. But yeah, Amen. That too. That too. So, <laughs> Amen. To add to that, it's in Genesis where Joseph says, interpretation comes by God. Amen. When he, when he had to interpret the butler and bake his dream. Amen. He says, interpretation is only by God. Amen. That's what's happening. How did Nebuchadnezzar know that it was Christ walking with the Hebrew world? But well, he was, he was, taught, by he was three. taught by the three by the Hebrews. Amen. He had discernment. Yes. Verse eighteen, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this what rock will I build my church? And we understand this rock is the foundation, right? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the what. The keys to the kingdom of heaven. So right here, Christ says he'll, he'll build here and he's going to give the key. Right? Next, um, next quote. Let's just look at the bold. It says, But on this day, before they were brought face to face with the great trial of their faith, the Holy Spirit rested on them in Paul, which was the question I just asked. The, how does Ellen White say the Holy Spirit when the Bible says the Father? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. The Bible explains itself. Amen. It says, but it is written, I had not seen nor a heard. Isn't that what she said about Peter when he got the revelation? For, for a moment he was taken to things that are not seen. Right? So the Bible says, but as it is written, I had not seen nor a her, neither have entered into the heart of men the things that God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So there, there we have it. God made this revelation, but we know there is an order. God works by, by his spirit. Amen. So let's look at what, what the keys of that kingdom is, because Peter... He received the key. It says the keys of the kingdom of heaven are the what? The words are the words of Christ. Is that plain? Mm -hmm. So what, are they, what do we receive here then? What is this light? Words, words. It's the words of Christ. Mm -hmm. All the words of the Holy Scripture are His. And are here included. Amen? Yeah. Go ahead, Rashad. All scripture, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's it's all of his words that are pointed forward to him and his 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 work. His, his, his yes. The, the, um, the plan of salvation. Amen. So she says all the holy scriptures are his and are here included. So that key is understanding in all the scriptures. Amen. Right? These words have what? Power to shut and power, power to open and power to shut. Who has power to open and shut? The two witnesses. Right here. This is in pouring the holy oil. What, is it? what we read earlier about um, the outpouring of, of love from the heart of the giver. Right? So Mary, she was demonstrating God's work. By giving the gifts profusely. Right? And those gifts come via the Holy Spirit through the two witnesses. So you see, God is establishing His, his line of, of, of commandment. And, and we know that when you come here, Joshua 20 says what? Confess to the, elders. To the elders. Right? So, it says, These words have the power to open and to shut heaven. That's Elijah. They declare the condition, conditions upon which men are received or rejected. Thus, the work of those who preach the word of God is a savor of life unto life or of death unto death. Theirs is a mission with eternal results. I know it doesn't show Moses in here on the surface, but do you see Moses in here? How?
his position was so high when he when he sinned once it cost him entering the promised land? No, in relation to Elijah. How do you see Moses in here in relation to Elijah? No, it's all right. You're right with what you said. But how do you see Elijah in here? I'm Moses in here. Because the message is a message of what? Life unto life or? Moses has the power to do what? Bring the plagues as often as he will. Right? And the plagues is the destruction. Right in here, you have the two witnesses. Right? So the key, the two witnesses comes to open the scriptures to you. They come to pour out their holy oil in you, giving you the what? The anointing, sanctifying you for the work ahead. Are we following? It's like Mary came to sanctify Christ for the, burial. for the burial. They come to sanctify you for the burial. So Mary has this, you can see these multiple applications of Mary and what she's doing. She's representing God in sending his son to die. But she's also representing God sending the two, the two witnesses who are sent to anoint you for your burial. Amen? But at the same time, we, his disciples, have to have that sanctified discernment so that we know that we have to wash the saints' feet. Right? Because you have to demonstrate the love of Christ here as well. One of the things that's been asked for in this movement is where is the love? Right? Right here. There's a crisis, and in crisis, what, what, what is demonstrated? Character. character. Right? On a small scale, character is revealed here. It will be seen. Who has the love of Christ in their heart? Continuing on. Based on what you just said, mm. then Mary is showing that love there, and people are rejecting that love. Yes. Therefore, it demonstrated they didn't care about the love order prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> they, they say, where's the love? And then God shows it. Yeah, and, and they'll be like... Fight. That's not the love we want, right? Matthew 16, I think that text should have been higher. I'll, I'll just skip over it. So, let's go to the next quote. The Zara of Ages 415, paragraph 2. says, He, the two, he, Christ, had refrained from making them know anything relative to his sufferings and death. So, before this point, Christ is not, he is showing you his death, but he's not giving you the, the, yeah, the details. He's not giving you the, 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 the hard truth, so to speak. Amen. Yeah, amen. He's not showing you your death. Job on to the next bowl. But now they have been with Christ, listening to his words, beholding his works, until, notwithstanding the humility. Come on, guys. Keep your eyes up here. But now they have been with Jesus, listening to his words, beholding his works, until, notwithstanding the humility of his surroundings and the opposition of priests and people, they can join in the testimony of Peter, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now the time came for the veil that hides the future to be withdrawn. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. The light that comes here at the little time of peace is only going to be repeated here because this prepares you for this journey, right? This, this, this three days in, 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 in the belly, okay? So... But Christ can't give you this light until he, he knows that you have sanctified discernment. Because the script, Ellen White tells us that if he gives it to you, you wouldn't make right use of it. Right? In fact, you would have fled, just like the first group. When they discern, eat my flesh and drink my blood, what did they do? They turned away. Right? And Christ couldn't have, have given that, um Christ couldn't have given the, the disciples the details at that point either because they would have turned away. And, and, and that is shown in when he said to the, to the priest, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And why it says, at that point, he didn't explain what that meant. Right? Because they couldn't bear it. And that's why he says, I have so much things to tell you, but you, you cannot bear it. But let's see, in the next quote, it's going to tell us those who could bear it. 
Only those who have been diligent students of the scriptures and who have received the what? The love of the truth will be shielded from the powerful delusions that takes the world captive. By the Bible testimony, these will detect the deceiver in his disguise. To all, the testing time will come. By the sifting of temptation, and genu the genuine Christian will be revealed. Are the people of God so firmly established upon his word that they would not yield to the evidence of their senses? Would they in such a what? Crisis, she's talking about the, the, the great crisis, cling to the Bible and the Bible only. Satan will, if possible, do what? Prevent them from obtaining a preparation to stand in that day. So before, before I take Kunar's hand, the, the light that comes here at the little time of peace is to do what? To prepare you for the crisis. But what does she say Satan will do? He will try to take away that preparation. Right? So then we have to see Satan working between the little time of peace and the midnight cry. Amen? Go ahead, Kunar. Yes. On forward. And the fact that Peter discerned Christ because God taught him, mm -hmm. Mary discerned the work of Christ because God, God taught, taught her. You will be able to discern Satan. Yes. Because if you can discern Christ, you can see the difference you see. between the two. Amen. So you'll be able to discern Satan. That's why he can't that's why he wants to fight there. Amen. He doesn't want you to have that discernment because then you'll see him working at the midnight cry. Because he's revealed. Yeah, and you can avoid him. Amen. What does light do? It illuminates the darkness. Right? So, continuing on, she says, He will so arrange affairs as to hedge up the way, entangle them in earthly what? Treasures. What was Judas entangled in? Earthly treasures. Cause them to carry a heavy, wearisome burden. Did Judas carry a heavy burden? How did he end? end? Because his burden was heavy. Right? He broke the cord. Carry a heavy, wearisome burden that their hearts may be overcharged with the cares of this life and that the day of trial may come upon them as a thief. And the Bible tells us that when the, sun, um, the, the seeds that fall into the thorns, right? It says the thorns came up and choked them, right? So now when this light come, we have to expect the work of the, the work of the enemies, right? So let us look at the work of the enemies and see how we, we once taught the work of the enemies. In the line uh, of the decrees, right, we have um, 538, uh, um, five, 538, fall of Babylon. Then we have Daniel, right? Then we come to this point, we have the first decree, amen? First decree. It's rather small, so I'll just put 1D. Followed by what? The foundation and the work of the enemies, right? So, you will put the enemies. But also the foundation. Followed by the second decree and the third decree. I'm going to stop here. Now, when you go to the Millerite line, it begins with what? 1798. And we know that because this is the end of the 70. This is the end of the 1260. The same thing, right? Amen. Babylon and spiritual Babylon. Followed by 1833. And we have uh, 18, what came in, what was confirmed in 1840? The first angel's message. This is what I'm looking for. In parallel in the decrees, right? Followed by what? What came in 1842? The charts, right? Yeah, the chart. Amen. And then <laughs> you have the confirmation of the second angel's message, followed by the third angel's message, right? This is the midnight cry. So now, when you come to the final reform line, and I'm going to use the final reform line, the time of the end, 
Sunday Law, followed by the Midnight Cry, followed by the final review. Line upon line, this is the foundation of God's church, right? The, 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 the first group, the first fruits that are perfect, right? Now they make up the foundation of God's church. So then it goes back into the Sunday Law, um, Midnight Cry, final review. So, is that a hand, buddy? Go ahead. Oh, you mean coming up to this point? What ends there at the Sunday law? The period of darkness. Right? I'll explain that further during the week. But it all, it, it's because you come into the time of the end. And before the time of the end, there's always a period of darkness. And this period of darkness is demonstrating a time when man mixes God's word, truth and error. Okay, so before that is the civil Sunday law, right? But man is going to mix truth and error in between there. And so God now has to do what? Because at the Sunday law, what, come, what happens at the Sunday law? Who comes together? Church and state, right? So God now has to send a people to, 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 to deal with that. So... Just keeping those two things in mind, right here, you have the foundation and the work of the enemies. Amen? When you come to 1842, you have the foundation and the work of the, and the, work of the enemies. This is the principle. Right? However, when you come down to the last line, then what should you have in between here? You should have the same thing, right? The work of the enemies. But if you bring in the other two lines, you will also see the first miracle, which is the first time on earth a group of men is walking without sin. Right? The first time. So you so you bring in those line upon line, you can make these these um so so right here we have the enemies. And so let, let us just look at it quickly. Um Ezra four and verse one. The Bible says, Now when right, and this is key, when and then, right? Where does the, how do we lay the win and then? How do we lay? The At the same place, right? You know, before I, before I do that, let's go, go to the page 10, top of page 10. I just want to, Lay this right here, because it'll add to to what I'm trying to show. On on page ten, I have Daniel three twenty eight to twenty nine, right? And this is showing um, when the three Hebrew boys was thrown into the den, right? Which is let's say I'm putting it up here. They're thrown into the den, and the fire is made how how much hotter? Not the den, the the, the fire furnace, seven times hotter. M De demonstrating the last crisis, right? So we know we have this seven times here, right? And at the end of that, what does Nebuchadnezzar do? He makes a decree, forcing people to worship the God of Daniel, right? So you have this decree. You go to Daniel 6, which is the next text. At the end of that, it says, I make a decree that in every dominion in my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Darius, he does the same thing. Right? So you come to this point, and Darius also makes a decree after Daniel is removed from the, from the den. Right? And you go to the book of Esther, there's also a common decree that is made, giving God's people an opportunity to defend themselves. Right? And all these is showing, the, the, all these three decrees, it brings a kingdom to a state of peace. You follow all these decrees are marked. Next witness. You have World War I, followed by World War II, which is the two times of trouble. Amen? And, and, and what ends World War I? A League of Nations, right? They, may, they put forth uh, this, this armistice, a uh, decree, that brings them to this little time of peace. So the point that I'm making is when you come here to the final review on the final reform line, it begins what? 
the little time of peace. Are we following? So you have this trouble, followed by the little time of peace, right? Followed by this trouble. Same principle, different structure. Right? You got to see that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to take the principle of the little time of peace. In the little time of peace, what always happens? Enemies. Right? So when you come to this line, what should be here? Enemies. You should always see the work of the enemies. Right? But the little time of peace then, it bears this structure. This structure. We see it? So now, take the little time of peace here, and I'm going to bring it down here, right? So this is the little time of peace. Yeah, midway, amen. The whole thing is the little time of peace, right? Let's know that this is the beginning, right? So this is midway. And this is the midnight, midnight cry. This way, Mark, then, is the work of the enemies. Right? So now, we've been learning and showing that right here, there's a light that comes. Right? And you have to demonstrate your sanctified discernment. Right? And when you do that, the Bible says, From that time forth began he to, to show them how that he must go to the cross. Right? But we just read this quote on page... Uh, read this quote on page um, page 7 she says Satan will if possible prevent them from obtaining a what? a preparation for the crisis right? so when this light comes at midway Satan rises up to prevent you from gaining this preparation for the for the crisis right? So I know, I, I, let's just now go in the Bible and look at this, this, this thing. Because right here at Midway, this is where Christ says, upon this rock. Amen? Upon this rock will I build my church. And this rock is the foundation. And every time the foundation is laid, what does Satan do? He rises up. We see that in those two lines. So let us go to um, Ezra. It says, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they then came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Eshahadon, king of Asher, which brought us up hither. And Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, What? Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. What is Zerubbabel demonstrating? Discernment. Sanctified discernment. Right here, I'm, I'm taking the same story and I'm laying this principle showing when you come here, you have to be like Zerubbabel. And you have to have this sanctified discernment to know who could participate and who can't. Because otherwise, they're going to daub the wall with what? Untempered, Untempered mortar. Well, that would be showing them that some people are going to come to us. Yes. To be a part of what we're doing. But you have to be able to discern them. And, and Ellen White says, before anyone baptized, they have to demonstrate fruit. Before anyone could be baptized into the fold, they have to demonstrate fruit. Yes, it excludes open sinners. But some people going to lie. And that's what it shows. Judas, he hides his, his sin. So, continuing on. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord of Israel as King of Cyrus the Persia has commanded us. So he's doing this according to the word of the Lord. Do you see? Because Cyrus was, them, was, was commanded by God. And so he's saying, we're following the word of our Lord right now. And, we, and, and, and you're, you're only going to be a distraction, right? You're not sanctified enough to join in that work. Verse 5. And, sorry, verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of Judah and what? Trouble them in building. And I want to point out that 
the struggle begins as soon as the light comes. Okay? Because they're building the foundation. It's not built yet. You follow? By principle, right? The, the, when light comes, it is not what? Understood. Understood. So what do we have to do? We have to study it to understand it. And when we understand it, then we have a rock to place our feet on. And then what are we to do after that? As soon as we understand it, we preach it. Light comes, we preach. Right? So using these same principles. It says, And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus. And this is why we have to see that they're not yet at that, at that point where the, en the, the enemies, so to speak, is fulfilled. So as soon as they begin to work, they begin to get trouble. But this trouble comes to a height. It says, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So this whole little time of peace, while it's a little time of peace, it's also still a spiritual battle between Christ and Satan. We, we, we understand? Michelle, stay with us. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, this is false murders. All right? In the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And this is what came back. Give ye now commandment to cause the men to what? To cease, and that the city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. This is the, this is the, 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 the enemies. This is the, 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 the decree that is coming from false murders. Right here. This now is the work of the enemies. Right? Because when you go back to, when you go back to this line, right? Taking the first decree, which is Cyrus. Second decree is Darius. The Bible says they had trouble from the, for the whole thing. But the decree stopping them came by false murders right here. So this is what I'm saying. In a little time of peace, the trouble begins from the beginning, but the real height of this trouble, so to speak, it begins right there at, at the middle point where you have now the work of the enemies. Drop down to verse 23. So I'm saying right here you have Cyrus. And again, this, this, this is the principle, okay? Then you have false murders. How do you spell murders? Thank you. And then you have Darius, right? Again, don't confuse it with prophecy. I'm just taking the principles, right? So, let's see in verse 23, it says, Now, when the copy of King Ahasuerus' letter was read before Rehum and Shimei, the scribe, uh, and their companions, they went up in haste unto Jew the Jews and made them what? Cease by what? By force and power. Remember we read earlier, it says, when the adversaries came, then the people of the land weakened the hand of the Jews. Right? So you have this first when and then. But now it says, when the decree came. Right? When the decree came, it says, then cease the work of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. Now I want to point out, and I'll make that point again earlier, I pointed out that uh, well, the Bible says all these things are written for our ensembles. We are not to stop the work. We cannot repeat that mistake. Right? They're going to do it again in our time and we cannot stop the work. Did Christ stop the work? No. And they killed him. Right? So continuing on. It says, Then cease the work of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. Go down to the next quote. Now let's look at Millerite line. Right, because it shares the same principle. It says in June 1842. Now let's take these principles here again. So this would be uh, 8, 11, 40. And then this would be 18, 42, marking the work of the enemies, but also the laying of the what? Of the foundation. And then you have here... Um, 
So I'm saying, I'm, what I'm seeing is the principles that apply on these lines on, on every level, we also see the same principle in the little time of peace. Right? It says in June of 1842, I'm pointing right here. Keep in mind, I'm, I'm, I'm making this application to the little time of peace. The light had already came, August 11, 1840. Who came down? Who came down? No less a personage than Jesus Christ himself, the light. Right? And, and, and Ellen White says, Satan, he wanted to keep them from making a preparation. Right? So this light comes, and she says, In June of 1842, Mr. Miller gave his second course of lectures. Drop down to the bowl. With few exceptions, the different denominations closed, closed the doors of their churches against Mr. Miller. Many discourses from the various pulpits sought to expose the alleged errors of the lecture. This quote gives me a little more insight of how the enemies work. The enemies, they go and preach against you. That's how it begins. But in Cyrus' time, it says by force and power. Right? So, continuing on, which is what I like. The foundation standing sure, amen? And the foundation we read is God's word. God gives you the key to his word here at the little time of peace. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. The work of the enemy, right? You see it in all these stories. Job down to the, to the last paragraph in CET 21. It says, Mr. Miller's manner of preaching was not flowery or, or, or oratorical. He dealt in plain and startling facts that roused the hearers from their careless indifference. He supported his statements and theories by what? Scripture proof as he progressed. A convincing power attended his word. And that seemed to stamp them as the language of truth. So did Miller stop? No. The enemies did what they did, but Miller kept preaching. Amen. So this snow is the point that I'm making. Christ didn't stop. Miller didn't stop. Right? You keep going. Zerubbabel, well, the work did cease, but then they came right back and began that work. We can't make that mistake of stopping the work. Amen. All right, so this foundation, let's prove this foundation, 1842. She says, the warning has come. Nothing is to be allowed to come in that will disturb the foundation of the faith upon which we have been building ever since the message came in 1842, 1843, and 1844. So where is she marking this foundation? 42. What came up in 42. The charts, right? On the 1842 chart, 1843 chart, is all the foundational truths, right? That makes you a Seventh-day Adventist, right? She says nothing should come in the way. So what does that tell us about Midway? About this point when the enemies come down? Nothing should get in the way, right? I mean, much more time out. I make it, oh yeah. Okay, I got to stop. Okay. She says, I was in this message and ever since I have been standing before the world. True to the light that God has given us. We do not propose to take our feet off the platform on which they were placed as day by day we sought the Lord with what? Earnest prayer, doing what? Seeking light. So what did the Lord give them? Light, right? He gave them light. Continue on. Do you think I could give up the light that God has given me? It is to be the what? The rock of ages. It has been guiding me ever since it was given. Brethren and sisters, God lives and reigns and works today. His hand is on what? Whose wheel? Right here. What does Ezekiel see? The wheels within the wheels. Right? So principally, the messages of 1840, 42, 43, 44, we can see. It's the light that will carry us all the way 
through. There's, there's a light that comes here at the little time of peace. And she says nothing is to stand in the way of that light. But what are they going to say? Nothing is going to stand in the way of this new movement. Right? Continuing on. His hand is on the wheel. And, his pro and in his providence, he is what? There are periods that are turning points in the history of the church and of nations. And when that time comes, what? The light for that time. God's people has to have an intelligent knowledge of what's going to happen next. Because we have to know that once this comes, the wheel is going to turn. And at the next point, light for that time will be given. It's the same at the Sunday law. And you could take that, qu that quote and show the same principle at every waymark. A foundational truth. Yeah. The Lord is laying something there. And you have to stand on it until he reveals another light. Yeah. Alright? Continuing on. Let not men fasten themselves to documents. Saying that they will do. Saying what they will do and what they will do not. Will not do. Let them what? Let them what? Let them do what? Hold on to the cord. Hold on to the cord. Let them fasten themselves to the Lord God of. When the cord came down, where did he come from? Heaven, right here. You're grabbing onto that cord, right? And then she says, Then the light of heaven will shine in the soul's temple, and we shall see what? What did Mary see? What did Peter see? What does Satan not want us to see? That's why he comes on to fight. As soon as that light comes down, he's on the ground, work of the enemies. He's coming to stop the preparation for the midnight cry. Say again. Yes, it's the last call. He's making this last, last push. But again, when you get to the midnight cry, what does Satan do when Christ comes with the exceeding bright light? He comes on again, working work, the work of the enemies. The principle, is, 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 it stands... Every time the light comes, you expect the enemy to follow. Right? But God's people, she says, nothing is to stand in the way of this light. Right? So, um, last thought. Go down to, to Desire of Ages, uh, page 11, the one... It's off pages 541, paragraph 1. Um, while this supper was going on, who, who was having a meeting? The priestly plotting, right? So the work of the enemies and the work of Christ, they begin at the beginning. That's what I was showing. That's what we saw with um, Ezra, right? From the beginning, they was there trying to stop the work. But then they got false murders to work here at that point where he now make a decree. Same thing while the supper is going on at the beginning, they're having their, 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 their con confederacy, right? So let's just read that bold part. And I just wanted to say, Ellen White says right here, one by one, she says, with few exceptions, the churches began to close their doors. Okay, she says this. This is Satan's decree. This is false murders. Satan told them that in order to maintain their authority, they must put Jesus to what? To death. They followed the counsel. This, this is the work of false murders. In order to, 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 if you read the whole story, false murders wanted to keep territory because he says that in times past, they had their kingdoms and they made others pay tribute. Right? So they don't want to, to become, basically fall victim to that. Now, Mm -hmm. So when you put Christ to death when you close the door. Amen. When you close the door of your heart, you're putting him to death. Amen. So the next thing you're going to do is literally kill him. Yes. It demonstrate that you've shut the door of the heart. All right? All right. She says, the fact that they might lose power, the power they didn't exercise, was the very, was, they thought, sufficient reason to come to some decision. With the exception of a what? Same language. With few exceptions. With the exceptions of a few who dared not speak their mind, the Sanhedrin re received the words of Caiaphas as the words of God. 
They took that false light and they made it their salvation. Amen. Ellen White says, nothing is to stand in the way of this light. Well, they said nothing is to stand in the way of our light. And what did, they, what did Caiaphas say? It's expedient that one man must die, for that the whole nation perish not. So you have these, these, these two works that's going on here. It is always we have to see the bar, battle of the great controversy. And what the Lord is, is, is impressing upon me, this point is important. However, what we do now until this point is important. Because it's going to determine whether we accept the light or reject the light. And if we reject the light, in fact, there's a quote in here which I didn't read. She says, when Judas, um, when Judas right, rose up against Mary, she says a demon entered him. Right? So you see, and then he went and did his work of betraying Christ the second time. So right here, this enemy, if you, if you fail to receive this light, right when you get to this point, a demon will enter. And you're going to shut the door against Christ. So I pray by God's grace that our hearts are brought to, 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 to these convictions of how we, how we must study. Because she says it's those who study. It is those who study that will have a defense against this work of the enemy. And that's why she put her faith in that light. Nothing will stand in the way, she says, of the light that came in 42, 43 and 44. We have a show foundation. Do we believe it? We have to believe it. This is our sure foundation. If we don't understand the truth, if we don't think, we, just go and start here. Start right here at this church. She says the 42, 43, 44, that's the light. That is the rock of ages. And so all we have to do is pray. It's only by prayer we will understand this truth. And by God's grace, we'll be sanctified by His Word and recognize it here and wash one another's feet when we come to this point. Let us pray. Kind of merciful Father, we, we do want to thank you, Lord, for the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Lord, the more we study these things, the more conviction you bring to us, Lord. And we thank you for these convictions. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will strengthen us in our hearts to move upon these convictions to go and to, to study, Lord, and to continue to learn on these things and to try these things to see if they, they are so. Lord, if there was anything that we said today that was unlike you, we pray and ask that you will strike it from our memories, that you will remove it from our hearts, that truth may take its place. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord, and we ask for your blessing throughout the rest of this Holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen.